What up, y'all? I'm Rajay. And I'm Shy, and welcome to the RXS Podcast. The podcast where we provide inspiration, motivation, and information to the music community. Gang, gang, yes. gang. So what are we talking about today? Today, I think we're talking about um finding our voice. Mm. Um maximizing opportunity mm. to find our own voice. We're talking to a young legend yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. And he speaks to us about like his journey from being a child up until becoming a young legend back to finding himself, his own voice, his own presence, his own identity. So it's a good one. I hope y'all enjoy it. Peace. What's up, y'all? Good to see y'all again. Good for y'all to see us again. If you're listening, thank you for listening. We got a very special guest in the building, the Michael Boone. What's good, bro? I can't call it, man. I'm good. How you feel? I'm good, man. Good, good, it's good, good to good. see you. Yeah, man. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a hot minute. A hot minute. Yeah, man. how things been going? Everything's been going good. Yeah. I can't complain about anything. Everything is going good. Everything is starting to fall in place. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Um, you preaching and singing now, right? Yes. How is yes. that? Um, it's great. It's I have a lot of fun. I do this full time. So yeah. I, I love it. I love what I do. You like flying? I love what I do. You like flying? <laughs> that could be <laughs> that could be kind of kind of scary sometimes. The planes can be kind of shaky, <laughs> uh, but I get to where I need to go. It gets me there a lot faster. It's better than driving <laughs> fifteen to sixteen, twenty hours, something yeah. like that. So I don't complain about it. Absolutely, God takes care of me. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna do like we always do. And I want to go back to the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. Where was Michael Boone born? I was born in a little town called Kinston, North Carolina. Shout out to Kinston. K-Town. K-Town all the it. way live. <laughs> so what was it like growing up in Kinston? Um, well, uh, I spent most of my toddler infant years in Kinston um, with my mother and my grandmother. Yeah. Then about 2003, uh, we moved to a little town about... 15 minutes from Kinston called Grifton. Yeah. And that's where I was raised majority of my life in Grifton, North Carolina. And hold on. You said with your grandmother and your mother. Yes. No father present. No father. Well, my father um, was a pastor in California. Okay. Uh, but we kept, we kept uh, contact. We yeah, kept, that's good. My father has always been in my life. Despite the long distance. That's good, so, man. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I had a father, but he just wasn't there. In the physically, home. In yes. the home. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. what was it like once you got to Grifton? Do you remember those years? Yes. Okay. What was that like? I remember those years very well. Um, it was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, my grandmother, she passed about three years ago. Okay. Um, when COVID had first first got started she didn't have COVID she had um congestive heart failure wow and uh yeah she passed and uh but those times in that house that little house in Grifton that was a lot of fun times um my grandmother was a quartet lover so okay we, me and grandma would just sit up and watch uh, uh, soaps and quartet all day long. <laughs> soaps so. and quartet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those those days, those days, I will never, I will never forget. It was a lot of fun. You know, I played outside with the kids and everything, but there was just something different about me. And yeah. being reared up by my grandmother, she was a seasoned saint. And yo, what's crazy is it makes sense because yeah. you got that on you still. Like as a yeah. young man, like when I first met you, I'm like, he old, he young, but he old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was was being with her your introduction to quartet music? Yes. Yes. Being with my mother and my grandmother was they both introduced me to quartet music when I was mm, I can't remember. Yeah. But it was it was it was the, one of the first things I knew. Yeah. One of the first things I knew. Did you, um, matter of fact, matter of fact, the first, the first quartet project that they played for me was Willie Neal Johnson and the new keynotes, Country Boy Goes Home One with Uncle Maurice. <laughs> yes, Lord. And the Tally Boys. 
that was the first video they played yeah. for me, and I was hooked after that. Ah, how old were you then? I had to have been about three or four. Okay, so at three or four, did you know you would sing? Yes. How? Yes. Matter of fact, even when I didn't know I was singing, they said I knew I was singing because when I was a baby, uh, they carried me to the programs, and every now and then when they would get quiet, I just let out a squall. <laughs> Yeah. I kid you not. Yeah. That's what they said. They said you was a tiny baby. You you would holler every time. So I I said wow. yeah, it must have been in me then. Yes, sir. and then my father sings and preaches, so it's it's already embedded yes. Yes. in my blood. So uh, yeah, yeah, I I knew I knew from then because I would always take chords and make microphones and sing out of them. I take <laughs> man remotes. <laughs> <laughs> spoons yeah ice cream scoopers and make, and make microphones <laughs> ice cream scoopers yeah hey that's a good microphone though because it got like the little yeah it got like the little thing and the thing <laughs> <at> the bottom. <laughs> yeah. so you um three four years old you start doing that yeah when do you discover though like okay no i really know how to sing how right. old were you when you recognized that Probably about five. Okay. Five or six, but I was too ashamed. Wow. I was too shy. Wow, why? I will I will I was shy, you know. I I, I don't know. I just was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just was. And uh, you know, I came out of it right around about ten. But if if they were asking me to sing when I was five or six anywhere, I wouldn't sing like I sang at the house. Yes. I'd be, oh, no, no. I wouldn't be, oh, Lord. I'd do that at the house. Oh, but at the, oh, oh, oh. that was me in public. Yeah. Because I was scared. <laughs> so, what do you remember the event, the time where you were not scared anymore? Yes. Okay, what happened? And how old were you? Um, I want to say I was eight or nine. Mm hmm. And I sung in my church mail course. Mm -hmm. I was I was the only boy sang with a group of men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I led, I led a song that Sunday. And what I did at home came out. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, nobody could get right after that. That, <laughs> that, 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 that place was in an up. Yes. And how old did you say you were? Eight or nine. Yes. And I think that may have been like, so if you were eight or nine, that's when your run started. Because yeah. that's when I kind of saw you. So yeah. after that, were you like, okay, I'm cured. I'm cured yeah. of the shot, yeah, Lord, yeah. you delivered I'm, me from being shot. I'm, I'm kind of cured. <laughs> I need a little more work. Yeah. I'm kind of cured. But it wasn't until I turned 10 that I really started to. And what, what was the difference? It, so turning 10 what was happening that got you to that place where you're like okay i think i'm all right i'm getting there well when i was 10 um that's when i joined my first group okay what was the group uh they were out of kinston north carolina they were called the gospel messengers okay um and so i started singing with them and we started singing locally around kinston and jacksonville and we first 20 know, mile radius yeah got, got the rocky mount <laughs> You know, y'all were doing something in Rocky Mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So doing, so doing all those concerts helped you to become more comfortable with it. Yes, locally. Yes. And then um, I went from there, um, cause we were at some show, at some show where I met this guy named Harry Hill. I know Harry Hill. Yes, sir. Shout out to Harry Hill. I love you, man. Yes, sir. Um, and Harry Hill. Matter of fact, we were in Goldsboro. We were in Goldsboro. That's the night I met Doc McKenzie. Yeah. You were playing yeah. with him at the time. <laughs> I sung I Am Redeemed with Doc McKenzie in the highlights. <laughs> we got that DVD somewhere. Let me tell you something. That video will never see the light of day. You hear me? <laughs> I remember it clear as day. Everybody was on that show. Tammy Edwards was on that show. Yo. <laughs> and I met Harry Hill that night. And Harry Hill told me that he sang with a group called Anthony Lofton. And the Soulful Deliverers. Yeah. And he asked me, would I be interested? I have to unpack this night. Yes, this sir. This segment. Let me unpack this whole night in this segment. Yes, sir. Okay. So Tammy Edwards was there. Met her. 
like up close and personal for the first time. Yes, sir. Um, um, Doc was there, met him up close and personal for the first time. Now, you know, I, I've, I've all, I had always been scared of Doc before this, but <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. But, <laughs> yeah. 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 but when I met him, he was so, he was down to earth and he just said, man, I, I got to let the world see you. Ooh, that sounds just like him. I have to let the world and the industry see you. And so he was going to take me on the road with him. He, he, Doc is the first man that brought me and introduced me to the gospel industry. Yes, sir. So I always got to give credit to Doc yes, because he is still a mentor of mine. Yeah. And he was the first to bring me on the road a little bit with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, okay, so I meet them too. Harry tells me about this group called Anthony and the Soul for Delivers and asks what I like to be a part. So, yeah. And so when we were, you know, we would get calls from everywhere. We were going as far as Fedville, as far as. South Carolina, as far you played a couple of shows with yes, us. Yes, yes. You played a couple of shows with us, and every show we went, like we were, we were doing, yeah, yeah, doing the job, yeah, absolutely. Every, every single show, that yeah. that was some of the best times I had, you know, on the as far as on the local aspect. Yes, sir. It was with Anthony and the Soul for Deliverers, and then. I don't know. Things just happen. I don't remember how they happen. Yeah. But when I turned, uh, when I turned thirteen or twelve, that's when I guess it was time for me to branch out. Yeah. It was time for me to branch out. Uh, I'm not gonna keep talking. I'm gonna let you. No, I let love you ask it. Your what, no, I love it. All right. So, what was the next step of you branching out? Uh, the next step of me branching out was uh, forming. Uh, well, I like to call it the rough draft back then of my own group. Yes. My own group. It was you, yeah. a guy named Brandon Sutton. Shout out to Brandon Shout out Sutton. To Brandon. Shout out to Quentin Boone. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, who, who else? It was my dad. That was really it. And then he would get other people. On drums and he'd get somebody to play yep. guitar and bass and yep. stuff like that. And uh, we just formed formed a group called Michael Boone and AD. It was AD, my mama came up with the name yeah. Anointed Divinity. Yeah. So we and then we were just we were starting to create a, a little buzz around certain areas like Newton Grove, Fayetteville, same same. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Twenty twenty five, probably thirty mile radius. Um, and so we started with that, and then personnel changes happened, yes. and all of this type of stuff. And when I was 14, 15, that's when I just stopped the group. Yeah, what made you stop it? Um, a lot of people, you know, coming in and out. Yeah. In and out, in and out. There was no, um, there was no stability. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? There was no stability. And um, my mother showed me that there was no stability. So we just decided to. Yes, sir. Just, quit yes sir. you know but we did we had we had a lot of good times we had a lot of good times we had a lot of people to come in and out the camp um jamario artist yes came in the camp for I a love little that spell boy. yeah shout out to him playing with bruno mars god it is ridiculous he is a beast <laughs> Facts. Yeah. yeah i had jamario come in at one time i had chris stevenson yeah shout out to I, had chris. A, I had a lot of great people i had tory Pugh. yes sir i had man i had jerome morgan <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, I had one time I had the whole Southern Wonders. <laughs> you did. You I had, had the Southern Wonders. You Southern were just Wonders. leading. Yeah, I was just leading. <laughs> For those of y'all who are around yeah, Eastern North Carolina, y'all know. If you don't remember the Southern Wonders, where have you been? <laughs> Facts. The Southern Wonders yeah. are a staple. Yes. Are a staple in Eastern North Carolina. Absolutely. Shout out to all of them. Absolutely. I had almost all of them. Amp artists. Uh, uh, Jerome Cornell, Jerome, my dad. Cornell <laughs> Parker. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> the whole crew was Gerald playing too. Yep. <laughs> Gerald Bender. Yeah, you had the whole group. I had the whole Southern <laughs> yeah, Wonders. Yeah, that's crazy. Only thing the name just wasn't the Southern Wonders, <laughs> right? It was, <laughs> but that's definitely who it was. Yeah, it was the Southern Wonders. Yeah, and that, that was an honor. Yeah. When I now that I look on it, that was an honor to have those guys that. I heard on that CD. Yeah. All my life. That one live CD, that that goes in my least in my top 20 wow. live albums wow. 
of all time. The southern. Wow. The su- I am drifting here, but I'm. I'm you, trying it's to make all a point. good. It's all good. I'm trying to make a point. That is in my top twenty albums of all time. Wow. I love that album. I it was good, album. man. I love that was a good album. So I had them. Man, I had some everybody. David Dickens. Yes, I had, Lord. I had I had some good people to come and sing behind me. Yeah. Doug Joyner. Doug yeah. Jonte Joyner. He just came back. Yeah, that's dope. That's me. good stuff. He's back with me now. And <laughs> we sung, we just sung the other night in Greenville. And I said, man, it's like old times. And you always stand in the middle. Yeah. He always stood in the middle. So yeah, I had I had I've had some pretty good, pretty good, you know. And then, you know, recently I've had, you know. My guys from Alabama, TJ Smith. Yes, I love TJ. That's from my brother. All of those guys from yeah. Blessed by Four. I've had them to come. I've been blessed to have some good people come and help me out. Yeah, what is it? Yeah. To be to be a young guy from a little town, man, how does it feel to have that much love and support? Uh, man, um, sometimes it's unbelievable. Yes, sir. Sometimes I look and I look at the things that I've done already. And it's like, I did this? Yeah. Me? Yeah. And then the thing about it, what really gets me is the children. Yes, sir. When the children, when the children dress themselves up in a suit. Wow. And wear sunglasses. Yes, sir. And record videos and their parents send them to me. And they're singing, climbing up the ladder. They're singing. Closer, they're singing, old ship is out there singing, whatever I have, I have made, that touches me. That touches me when I can reach the children. Wow. Whenever I hear a child say, I want to be like Michael Boone when I grow up. Woo! Dude, you don't know what that does. Like, the, the children, now don't get me wrong, I love everybody. I love the love from support from everybody. But the children touch me the most because I was in that place. Yes. I was the one putting on suits and acting like I was Willie Neal or like I was Tommy Ellison or like I was the Jews or somebody. I was the one that would get in front of that TV. Yes. Put on my suit. Yes. Get the ice cream scooper. Yes. And just go all full force like I'm in front of a whole audience. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's that's what gets me the most. It's unbelievable. It's weird. Um, But I thank God for it. Absolutely. I thank God for it because I never thought I would be a celebrity as yes so speaking of that i gotta ask you so how and when did you become the lead singer of the singing stars well (laughs) that is i have to know the story behind how that happened that 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 and before that okay did people call you little tommy before you became the lead singer of the yes that's what i know i did yes yes you were yes. little Tommy before yes. that. Before the before the singing stars even discovered me, everybody said, "Man, you look like Tommy Ellison," <laughs> and I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't. I did not see. I said, "I look like my daddy," <laughs> and Tommy and, Ellison ain't my daddy. And you had, but you got some of Tommy mannerisms sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess his swag, his yeah. personality. Yeah, and everybody, everybody would tell me younger. Man, you look like you look like when I was nine. You look like Tommy Ellison. That's that's a little Tommy Ellison there. <laughs> so then you, be, how in the world did you become the lead singer, man? Well, it all goes back to two thousand and six, two thousand five. Um, we would go to a show every year, annually. Mm-hmm. Two thousand five until Tommy got sick. We would go to a show in Kinston called the Gospel Super Bowl. Okay. And it was done by these promoters. I don't know if you remember uh, Don and Vera Williams. I heard the names, yes. DNV Productions. Yes. They would bring it, they would bring it to, they would bring one to Kinston, they would bring one to Wilson, to uh, either Darden or Bedenfield, one of them. Yeah, I remember both of them. One of them too. They would bring it there. Um, so we would go see that show every every year annually and there was two headliners it was lee williams and the spiritual qcs and it was tommy ellison those were the two top headliners in there they might throw the swanee quintet in there one year to be on with them they might throw willis Pittman to be in there yeah one year with him you know and so they those the singing stars they remember me they remember me 
really from when I was a baby. Because yeah. my mom and grandma went to all the programs from the 80s to now. Yeah. They went to all of the programs. So the singing stars remember seeing my mother and my grandmother. And they remember when I was born. Wow. They remember me from when I was born and when I was a young fella. And so about 20... No, let me tell you what happened, though. Let me tell you what happened that's significant. Yes, sir. That why I kind of compare it, why I kind of pair it up. Now, I line things up. Now, why people say, oh, you look like Tommy Ellison. Um, I met Tommy Ellison. Okay, okay. I met Tommy Ellison. And I don't know if this was a patting of the torch of some sort. Wow, okay. But he just patted me on the head and smiled. Wow. That That's what I remember. My grandmother took me to meet him. He patted me on the head. Wow. And just smile. Yes, sir. As if you next. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget it. I was five or six years old, one mm -hmm. of those days. He patted me on the head like that. Wow. Smile. As if, okay. To say, yeah, you got next. Yeah. I ain't going to be here long. Wow. You got it. That's what I, now that I uh, uh, see it, you know, that's what yeah. I kind of get from it, as if it was a passing of the mantle. Yes, and, yes. Um, so now we speed up to 2012. <clears throat> I got the group. I got y'all guys. We're in Wake Forest, North Carolina. It's us, Singing Stars, the Gospel Legends. Who else is up there? I think the Gospel Imperials Yeah, yeah. were up there. It was in Wake Forest. It was done by Miss Millicent Haywood. Shout out to Miss Millicent. Shout out. Shout out to Miss Millicent. Um, and uh, Sam was sitting in the back, guitar player Sam, and uh, he saw my performance. So he came to me after the performance, came to me and my mom and said, uh, yeah, yeah, your son sound really great. Son sound really great, and uh, I want to work with him sometime. So he got my number then. But at the time, I was too young. My mom wouldn't let me go out on the road like I that. I got you. And I was in school. So I had to wait a few years. Okay. You know, and around 2015, that's when, Sam called me back. He said, "This is Sam. You you still re remember remember me? You you getting yourself ready?" I'm like, "Ready for what?" He said, "I'm gonna be calling you." I wow. Said, okay. Okay. So what he did was from that day forward, he sent me all of the material. Wow. All of it, which I didn't even have to learn because I already knew it. Yeah. I already knew it because my mom and my grandma played. All they played was. Tommy Ellison, Willie Neal, the Jew. So yeah. I already knew the stuff before he even sent it to me. I'm yes. like, Sam, you ain't had to send me all this stuff. I know it. Yeah. I know it. I got it. I can sing it in my sleep. Yeah. He was like, okay. He said, just be ready when I call you. And around 2016, summer of 2016, um, I'm a freshman in high school, getting ready to go into my sophomore year. Um, 2016, August. At this time, Justin Mickens was leading with them. Woo, Shout yes. out to Justin. Boy, I That's love Justin, guy. dog. He is a singer. You hear me? He a beast. Yeah. Beast. So at this time, Justin was leading with them. But at the same time, Justin sings with his dad. With his dad, Reverend yes. Matthew Mickens. Yeah. And so I guess uh, Justin was getting to a place to where it, it was conflicting with his dad, you know, and be, him being loyal to his father. Yes. He wanted to stick with his dad. So he was going out. Yeah. So... As he was going out, Sam called me and tells me, well, I'm, I'm going to need you for this date, these two dates. So I got first it started out just a couple of dates. Yeah. He said, I got two dates for you I want you to do. He said, we're doing this Saturday in Albany, Georgia, and we're doing Sunday night in Tampa, Florida. Would you be willing to come? I never will forget it. I was on my way to preach a revival in Williamston, North Carolina. Me and my mom, this is how well I remember. Me and my mom are in the line at Bojangles. <laughs> right before we get to church. And he calls me on the phone. I said, Ma, I have my own speakerphone. I said, Ma, we got, can I do this? And only thing my mom said was, well, are you sure? Wow. Because I had gotten to that place now to where she could kind of trust me a little bit. Yes, sir. So she was like, are you sure this is what you want to do? I said, yes, ma. Yes, I've waited for this. I've waited for this yeah. for a long time. This is my chance. She said, okay. She told Sam, as long as y'all take care of my son, 
Wow. That would be it. And after that, you know, Justin was, I guess he was trying to debate whether he was going to come back or not. So, um, Labor Day. When I was a little boy, first time in church, I heard a voice saying, come to Jesus. I stood right there with shield in my eyes. Change feeling had come over me. I had to take each step patiently, not even knowing where I would be. But now here I am. I'm all grown up, still climbing up the ladder. I can walk. After that, he gave me another date. He said, Labor Day. He said, Justin's not going to be here Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do that? I said, sure. We did Labor Day. From that day forward, he gave me the rest of the dates. Wow. For the, for the, for the rest yeah. of the year. He gave me the rest of the dates for the rest of the year. He said, you coming with us. Wow. And how has that, that been? And that, was, and that was Labor Day in Greenville, North Carolina. What year? 2016, Labor Whoa. Day of 2016 in Greenville, North Carolina at Jage Rose High School for Tammy Evans and the Evans Sisters Labor what? Day program. It's crazy that you remember it so good. Labor Day program. I never will forget it. And after that, that's the day he hired me and said, you coming with us. Wow. What's that been like so far? It's a journey. It's been a journey. I, I love those old guys. Yeah, man. Because it's love like those guys. You, you like you were young and they way older than you. Yeah. Yeah, they're older than me, and they trusted me enough to lead. Yes, to lead them and call out whatever shot. To yeah, call. so that that's that's a blessing in itself. I think um besides besides oh uh, who else has been young in that group besides Perry Taft and besides um what's his name besides got got a Columbia called Lil Hart. You yeah. see with him in the eighties. I think I'm the youngest, youngest person to lead to ever lead lead. Yes, out of the because everybody stars. else has been like, like, playing or something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. nobody's you're the youngest to lead for sure. Like yeah. that's not even a I'm question. The, I'm the youngest to be for the singing stars out of all of the history young of the guys. group. Yeah, out of the history of the group. That's crazy. What what's one thing or what's a couple of things that you've learned from them like <laughs> off stage? How to carry yourself. Yes, sir. Um, now you see me at programs, whether I'm with Tammy, whether I'm with my own group, or whether I'm with the singer stars, I'm going to wear a suit before I sing. Yeah. Those old guys told me one time, because one time we were in South Carolina at this show, and um, I I was wearing my traveling clothes at the program. I was about 17. I was wearing my traveling clothes to the program, and they pulled me to the side and said, look, you got to start dressing a little more. Dressing better than what you're dressing now. Because you a singing star. You a preacher. Yeah. You, got, you have to represent. So when you walk in the building, they'll say, oh, he he with somebody. Yeah. He, he a singing star. Or he a preacher. He, he, he yeah. got to be somebody. He's somebody of significance. Yes. So I have no choice but to respect him because he's somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing I've learned. And I've learned how to do. Do business right. Mm. I've watched them. You know, business just, I've learned that business does not need to be based off of friendship. That's right. Business, business and personal are two different things. That's right. You know, I love you, whatever, da, 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 da but when it comes time, you better give me my money. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so those, those are really two things I've learned. Yes. Those are two things, two highest yes yes and then another thing i had a third thing um how to read a crowd more true how to read a crowd more because now that i'm with my own thing now i know what to do 
what not to do, how to come on, not how not to come yeah. on stage, how to come off stage, how not to come off stage, when to leave the stage. Yes. <laughs> and not just go sing another song, when to leave the stage. Yes. You know, it, it's, it's just. Because that's important too. You can overstay yeah. your welcome on a stage. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you got them here, leave them. <laughs> Fact on. <laughs> leave I've them. I've seen many people mess that up. You have them here, and you, I'm telling you, it happened to me one night with them <laughs> in, Tar- <laughs> in Tarboro, North Carolina. I should have walked off a of stage with Closer, because it was yeah it was over after that. So I decided to sing another song after. <laughs> Dump them on over. Drop the ball. <laughs> I dropped the ball so bad. Hey, that's funny. <laughs> But I, I started learning more how to read my crowd and how to um, know which song to place here, which song to place there. Yes. Know what song is going to work at this spot, what song is going to work in that spot. Yes. And so now that's that's kind of going over with me into my, my own thing. Yes. So, I yeah, that's what I've learned. And learn to look clean, too. Yes. Go, go, uh, go. Get go to the cleaners. Yo, take, they the they, they the king it. of the suits though. All kind of colors. Oh man, y'all y'all be wearing skittles. <laughs> y'all be wearing all kind of colors. skittles, skittles. Do they have one place that they get their suits from? And us, um, some of those suits are tailored. Wow. All of the, matter of fact, when they were the when they were Tommy Ellison, when they were the yeah singing stars, all of their suits were tailored. Wow. Remember they had the short coat suits? Yeah. Those were tailored. Wow. All of their suits were tailored up until Tommy died. Wow. That's when they started, you know, not. Yeah, it's a little different now. Playing. Yeah, it's a little different now. But but the colors are still in there. But the colors, you they, can't. It's hard to find. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to find. So who in charge of picking the suits? Well, it was Sam at one time, but yeah. now it's Big O. Okay. You know. But we're trying to take that off him. The us, the younger guys, and me and Quan trying to, trying to, trying to get him to <laughs> change up the suit game a little bit. Yeah, you know. But yeah, anything, anything that keeps them satisfied. Yeah, man. You know, because they, they, they definitely deserve the honor. They deserve. Yes. They deserve the recognition. They deserve everything. They they deserve to see the fruits of their labor. Absolutely, they deserve to see the fruits of their labor. So whatever whatever they say, I'm I, I wear the suit. <laughs> Facts. So up until this point, what has been your favorite state or city? Wow. Um, <clears throat> like one that either from either from like just your experience in the city or state or the the concert like what's one city or state that you like yo i really love that as far as singing stars yeah oh man i would say georgia okay is one of my favorite states to go sing with them um georgia especially augusta when okay we, when we do yeah. the swanies anniversary because yeah. that that is always live <laughs> yeah. shout out to the swanies shout out to the swanies. yeah to that's the uh, that's uh, it's always good energy at that show yeah yeah Always yeah. has been. Yeah. Always has been. Um, Georgia. And then when we go up to New York, because, you know, that's that's home. Yeah. That's, that's where they're from, Brooklyn, New York. So, yes. So they give us a lot of love at home, too. Yeah. So I, I love singing up there, South Carolina, and then North Carolina. Yes. North Carolina is a singing star state. Yes. They love, especially areas like Kinston, Greenville, Wilson. They rock him out. They yes. love the sing stars in those areas. Yes, man. Yeah. So, yeah, those are a few of my states that I love to sing in. That's good stuff. So now I want to transition to Michael Boone, the preacher. How yes. and when did that happen? <laughs> well, I knew I was going to be a preacher when I was about five years old. Okay. I knew I was going to be a preacher when I was about five years old. Um. I would preach in school. I would preach to the students. Uh huh. I preach to the students in school in the after school. You know, I I do all kinds of stuff. I mean, I was just I was a wild child. Yeah. I was, when it came to that, I was a yeah. wild child. Um, I knew the Bible more than I knew math. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
I know how to speak in tongues more than I know how to count. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I would go home and read the Bible. I would not read a science book. Wow. I could not tell you the slightest thing about science, but I could tell you what the words say. Wow. That that was just how I was raised. I wouldn't. When I would come home from school, this <laughs> when I would come home from school, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do homework right away. Okay. I come in, put on quartet or put on preaching and study that. You know, and surprisingly, I still got everything right on my school stuff, <laughs> but you won't focus on it. But I won't focus on it. Yeah. You know, that wasn't where I I was different. Yes, sir. I was different. I was different. I was different. I was different. And I said to myself, this is how different I was. Cause I said to myself at a young age, cause I already hated, the, I already hated getting up in the morning and going to school, getting up at six o'clock. Yeah. Having, I hated that. I said, one day I'm going to be able to sleep in <laughs> yeah. early in the morning. I'm not going to have to get up so early to where I don't have to go to school for yeah. eight hours. <laughs> yes. And I, I was even, I was so, I was young, but my mind, this is how I knew my mind was mature because I said, I'm not going to work a full-time job. Yeah. I'm not, you will not see me. I said that at a young age. I will not do manual labor. I said, the only labor I want to do is out here singing and preaching. Yeah. Full-time ministry. And that was embedded in me at a young age. Now that I think of it, you know, I shocked myself now that I think of it. Yeah. Um, but I knew I was going to be a preacher back to that at like five years old. I had my own church in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. With, with the sign up and everything. I forgot the name of the church. I named it. But... <laughs> so you did name it though? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was preaching to the soap. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was preaching to the soap. Yeah. And uh yeah, and soaps and body washes were getting delivered. <laughs> <laughs> toilet paper getting set free. Toilet, toilet paper would be slung all over the floor and I mean, just laying hands on shower curtains. Everybody was getting delivered in there. The shavers and all. <laughs> so when did you preach your first sermon? My initial sermon I preached when I was 14. Wow. Where I preached, at? Preached my initial sermon at 14 at Zion Chapel, Free Will Baptist Church in Aiden, North Carolina. Shout out Aiden. Shout out to Aiden. Shout out to Bishop Parker. Yes. My first, one of my first pastors. Wow. Bishop Parker let me preach my initial sermon that Sunday, Sunday afternoon, and it was packed. I believe it. it I mean, because everybody already knew me from singing. Yes. Singing around. So you had all the people from the quartet world and from the wherever from where I did. Because I used to do solos, too, before I even started the group. I used yeah. to do solos at different churches. So now you had the people from different churches coming in. And, I mean, you could you could not find a seat in there. Wow. You had to sit out chairs. Wow. In the aisle. It was packed that day. It was packed that day. And, uh. Yeah, I preached my initial sermon then. Now, I had been jack-legging before because they had had me to speak on platform services like Fruit of the Spirit and, <laughs> and all of that stuff. And every every one of those Fruit of the Spirits or 7-Up services, rather, <laughs> I would preach. Yeah. They would have me to close. They would have me to do the last 7-Up seven, the last seven up or the last uh, Fruit of the Spirit or the yeah. last, you know, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost service. Yeah. They would have me to do the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know, so, uh they will always put me as the closer for all of those platform services. So by the time I got 13, 14, I said, you know what? I said, you know what, Lord? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to yield at an early age. I'm going to yield early. I want to, I want to preach. So about four at 14, I preached my initial sermon. Wow. 14. It was evident. It was evident that, I felt from the spiritual aspect now, I'm getting, I'm about to get deep. Let's go. I'm about to get deep. I felt God tugging on me. Yes, sir. I felt God tugging on me at a young age that this was what, you know, it was time. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, yeah, I've been preaching ever since. And what is your um, thoughts about the difference between 
preaching and singing. Two totally different concepts. Yes, sir. Two totally different concepts. Um, everybody say I started out as a singer. That's that's fine. I started out my singing ministry. Yes, I did. But preaching is the first job. Wow. Yes, sir. Preaching is always the first job. I don't care if, you know, if uh, the singing stars have to go anywhere. If I have to preach, I'm not going. I am not going. That's, and that's what I like to call the weight of the assignment. Yes, sir. The weight of the assignment on my life. So, you know, I, that's the difference. Everybody say, I'm, oh, I'm a singing preacher. I'm a, no, I'm a preacher that sings. Wow. You're a preacher first. I'm a, yes, I am a preacher that sings. Yes, sir. Uh, so that, that's the difference between it because. Preaching now, singing, singing, singing is ministry. Yes, it is. Don't get, don't get it twisted. Singing is ministry, but as if you weigh it out, the weight of the assignment for preaching ministry outweighs. Yes, sir. Singing ministry. I feel you because the word, the teaching, and the preaching of the word is what's going to keep. Mm hmm. The you singing know. to bring them in, but the word going to keep them. Yeah, the singing of the word is going to bring them in, but the preaching and the teaching of the word is going to keep them. Yes, sir. So that's the difference. Yeah, That's beautiful, man. Yeah, that's different. And then, like, you're at the age now where you're a man now. It ain't no more little Michael Boone. No. And no. you're managing your singing career with preaching and then just regular life. Yeah. How is that? Yeah. Sleep. <laughs> So you just, <laughs> I rest, I rest until I have to go back out. Yeah, yeah. I rest, I go for, I go, I like to go for walks. Yes. I like to jog. Yes. Just to exercise, just mm -hmm. to get, get, you know, get back in shape and drink water and stuff like that. Most of the time, I, I live a quiet life. Yes, sir. I live a very quiet life. I know a lot of people wouldn't. Believe, believe that. that but yeah but yeah i I'm, can believe that though. yeah i li i live right right because you've been around <laughs> <laughs> i live a very very quiet life i don't live too much in the scene only time you'll see me out is if i'm going to the store yeah and i'm going you know going to get something to eat you won't see me around right too much my friends try to some of my friends try to get me out and i go out rarely yes it's rare every now and then out out go out somewhere or to a pool hall or, yeah and just enjoy myself but you know i live a quiet life yes a very 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 quiet life i don't get involved in the hype of the city and downtown yeah some people love that all that stuff yeah, yeah i i just stay to myself so i got another question does does balancing everything that you do does it ever become overwhelming it can it can um, because, you know, you got Singing Stars date over here. You got Michael Boone and Company's date over here. You got preaching over here. It can be kind of hectic at times kind of trying to ba balance that all out because you're trying to satisfy all three. Yeah. You're trying to satisfy all three. I know if, if, if Michael Boone and Company is booked here, but the Singing Stars just picked up a show here that same day, you know, I know who I obli I'm obligated to first, but then I know that singing stars need me, and you know, yeah, that 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 hurts. It hurts sometimes. Yeah, you know, it really, it really hurts because I want to be there for the singing stars. Yes, but I also want to be there for my own thing. Yeah, you know, so it kind of brings a kind of a whatnot, but all in all, the good outweighs the bad. Absolutely. Good outweighs the bad. Preaching, you know, I I drop Michael Boone and come to and the singing stars for preaching. Wow, man, that's amazing to for hear. Preaching. Yes. I, I ain't trying to pastor no time soon. I was gonna ask you that. <laughs> no. Yo, no I was gonna ask you no. that, yo. <laughs> yo. No. Lord, that's definitely different. <laughs> I do not want to pastor anytime yeah, soon. Yeah. Because the way my life is set up now. <laughs> It's not set up for me to pass. Yes. And I, I don't, I don't I need that headache. Yes. <laughs> it's no joke. I do not need yeah. that headache. Uh, so, 
So right now, traveling and singing and preaching is the thing for now. Yeah. Yeah. Traveling evangelist. Yes. So getting back to, you, you've been doing the Singing Stars how many years now? Eight. Wow. And then you've been doing. I believe it's eight. Yeah. And how many years you've been preaching? I've been preaching for about mm, nine. Okay. And then you've been doing the solo stuff on and off this entire time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. On on, yeah. So now you're getting back to a place where you're doing more solo stuff? Yeah. I'm I'm getting back to a place to where um, now I can be myself. When I was a little boy, first time in church, I heard a voice saying, come to Jesus. I stood right there. Change feeling had come over me. I had to take each step patiently, not even knowing where I would be. But now here I am. I'm all grown up, still climbing up the ladder. I can walk. getting back to a place where I was when I was 10, mm. 11, 12, when I was with y'all. Yes. You know, yes. I'm getting back to a place where, you know, now is a chance for everybody to hear Michael Boone in his own light. Yes, sir. You know, and just to show that Michael Boone doesn't have to be just not necessarily under the shadow of Tommy Ellison. Yes. You want to be more than little Tommy Ellison. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I know I look like Tommy. I know I sound like Tommy, act like Tommy sometimes, but. But you're Michael Boone. I'm Michael Boone. Yes. And Michael Boone has something to offer to the people. Yes. Other than being little Tommy. Other than being, yeah. Other than being in the light of the singing stars and whoever else I may be with. Absolutely. You know. So up until this point, what has made you say yes to being a part of these other situations and not going ahead and solely focusing on you? To learn. To learn. To learn. That's good, Michael. To that's learn. good, bro. And oh, that's so good. <laughs> because some people, this is good. Because some people, may feel like you made the wrong decision by not focusing on you first. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But to hear you say to learn. Yeah. Is very wise because you get to see things and learn things and experience things being a part of something that you don't have to be fully responsible for. Exactly. So all that, you got to do is show up and say, yes, so then when it's time for you to be fully responsible, you know what comes with it. Right. Right. Michael, that's actually very smart. You have you have that knowledge. Michael, that's that very has, smart. You from being with George Dickens and the gospel. Shout out to them. Shout yes, out, man. Shout out to One George of the Dickens. greatest groups of all time. As soon as I got with them right after George Dickens had passed away. Wow. And this is where... If you ask about the solo stuff, I'm I'll get to that story. But shout yes. out to them. Shout out to them. I'm not yes. gonna touch on that right now. But yeah, from being with George Dickens, even being with Tammy Edwards, watching her on stage, how to work a crowd. Yes. If 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 you set it up, if you are not, if you ain't careful, you're gonna set it up just right for her to come up. Yeah. All she gotta do is speak in tongues. <laughs> and everybody's laid out in a matter of <laughs> 20 seconds. That's fact. I've seen it more than one time. <laughs> yes. All Tammy got to do is speak in tongues and prophesy, and you're finished. Yes. I don't care. I don't. <laughs> if you come on behind that, all that's left to do for you now is it's just the, sing. <laughs> yes. Just sing and go. Yeah. You don't want to mess with that. Yeah. Just leave it alone. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, so I I get under all these people just to learn. Yes. To learn. And what do you say to the people who feel like you've made the wrong decision? I said, well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say. I don't say nothing. I just keep doing what I do. Yeah. I don't say nothing. Yes. I let them say what they want to say. Yes. That's good, man. So now we're here. And now we have Boonisms. Yes. Where did that idea come from? Well, to be honest, Boonism started back in a long time ago. Long, 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 long time. <laughs> yeah. Boonisms, uh, it wasn't the name Boonisms. I didn't come up with the name Boonisms till like 2021. Okay. I felt like that was smart. That was a trademark for me. Yes. So it would work. And so it's been working for me. But Boonisms, the concept of Boonism, the idea, the project of Boonisms started really back in 2014. The late George Dickens Jr. Wow. Uh, we were gearing up to do a solo project. Mm -hmm. We were going back and forth around Christmas time of 2014. We were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. From Christmas 2014 all the way to January or February 2015. Mm -hmm. I had just left him. We did some dummy tracks and whatnot throughout that time. And uh, we had just left the studio that week before. That next week we were going to do a show. We were all on the show together. Tammy Edwards, myself, George Ziggins, and the Gospel Disciples. We get in the car to go to the program. Get in the car to go to the program. <clears throat> and my mother tells me and my grandmother, brace yourselves. I said, what? And I slept all day that day. I don't know why, but I yeah. slept until it was time to get up to go to the program. So I knew nothing that was going on through the day. Yeah. She said, brace yourselves. Y'all ready for this? I said, what? They said, my mama said, George Dickens died. Was shot and killed. And we was like, what? No. I just left this man. I just talked to him last night. Really? And so that kind of shut things down. Did it did it put you in a place where it put a halt on that whole project for you? It did. Yes, sir. It did. It did. It did. Boonism should have been done a long time ago. Yeah. But he got Yeah. Passed. He transitioned. That thing hurt me too. I remember yeah. my wife calling me yeah. like and telling me, and I'm like, no way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Ah, yeah, it's yeah, rough, that's rough a now tough talking one. about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then that that whole operation is shut down. Mm -hmm. Stop. So I'm like, man, I'm I'm never gonna do anything by, by myself. Then you come along. Yeah. And we do <laughs> we have a whole, yeah, it's a whole unreleased <laughs> yeah. Yeah. album, y'all. <laughs> yes. From 2015, 2014, 15. Yeah. That has not yeah. been released. Released. The whole album. <laughs> Good songs. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And we were planning to, re we did a whole CD release. Concert, yep. Yep. And the album, the CD was called Young and Saved. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you can be young. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we did a whole album. That never got released. So I was like, something's got to give. Yeah. But now that I see it, I needed to learn before I could step out on my own. That's good. Which leads me back to sing with everybody else. Yes. I had to learn so I could, before I could step out on my own. And now I'm in a place to where I feel as if it's boom season. Woo! That's heavy. That's heavy, bro. I'm in a place to where I'm confident that this is my season because people have seen me with everybody else. Yeah. Now everybody wants to see Michael Boone in his own life. And how do you know you're ready? Well, I did a show. Um, I did a show in, where was that? Birmingham, Alabama. Uh-huh. Come back over here soon. 20, okay. You good though. I did a show. I did a show in Birmingham, Alabama, around 2021. Mm -hmm. First solo show 
I did by myself in a long time. Yeah, I remember seeing it online, though. That jump went crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Climbing Up the Ladder had not been released yet. Wow. When I first signed with Antonio, I told him to release that single first. Yeah. He didn't do it. Whoa, okay. It took three years to get that song released. Wow. It was released, in, it was released last year, really. Uh, so 2021, a uh, promoter called Gerald Tyson calls me and asks me to be on his show in September of 2021. Lee Williams had just died. Um, so I said, yeah. Would you? He was like, would you like to come and do a tribute to Lee Williams? I was like, yeah, but I got, I got some new songs I want to sing myself. So that's when I said, you know what? I'm going to try climbing up the ladder out. And if that was it, the first time you tried it live? Live. Ooh, that joke went crazy. And if it works, I'm going to keep singing it. If the people don't get with it, I'm not going to keep singing it. I'm, I'm just not going to release it. Yeah. And Climbing Up the Ladder really is a public domain song, but it was recorded by a couple of other groups. Let me just put that out there. Back in the 80s, like the Pilgrim Wonders. Yeah, they, they version them. is tight. Yeah. Yeah, the Pilgrim Wonders version is tight. And it was a group that originally did it called Together. Okay. Back in the 80s, I had to do some research. So that's how I made <laughs> Yeah. It. But yeah, so I said, I'm going to try this out. And um, we get there to the show. I gather my guys from Alabama, TJ and um, Jason Smith and Terrell Smith. All of them are products of Blessed by Four. Yeah. And their band. And um, we get there. And the whole while, they say I'm coming up in one spot, they hold me back. They say I'm coming up in another spot, they hold me back. Say I'm coming up. I'm like, I'm tired of y'all pushing me back. Yeah. So that just made me want to sing more. That just made me. Okay, <clears throat> when I get up here, I'm going to really sing. Yeah. I'm going to sing. So we get up, get up there, and the first song I come on with is Climbing Up the Ladder. And it goes over. Yo, <laughs> that joke went crazy. That, I saw it. That song goes over well. Yeah. Well, and the rest of the songs we just did, Lee Williams tribute. Wow. And that, that was a really good set, and I knew then, you know, Cause I never had people crowd a stage. Yeah. For Mike, for little old Michael Boone. Yeah. To crowd his stage, and you know, cause it with the singing stars, yeah, they'll come to the stage. They'll come to the front. Cause yeah. It's big old. It's it's all of us in that. Yeah. Area. But when it's just one person out from. Yes, sir. The guys, you never know if people are gonna give you the same response. But that night, really, really solidified that you know. I can I can do all right, you know, as a solo artist. Yeah. Now, another night that really solidified, there's two other nights that really solidified whether I can do this by myself or not. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we did a show for Maurice Mazik in Marion, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that video. It's, I did. It's the video where I'm in the purple suit, and uh, I got Tori playing behind me. I got my guy, Javante. Uh huh. Daniels, shout out to Javante, um, X, Xavier Walton on bass, Brandon Perkins on drums, mm -hmm. my guy Chop on keyboard, uh huh, and Fussy on organ, uh huh. And you know it wasn't as tight and little Hezzy, yeah. Shout out to little Hezzy Bethea, yeah. Um, I got them playing, and you know we were just starting to get things together. The sound wasn't really tight. The sound yeah. wasn't really there yet. But that night, they had me coming on because Climbing Up the Ladder was booming. Yeah. It's hot. It's still hot as we speak. To God be the glory. Yeah. You know, so they put me on towards the end because I had the song. Yeah. You know, they put me on with the headliners, which was surprising to me because I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, so they put me on like right after or before Roy. And I went and I did what I need to do. And that night, it worked. Every song I sung that night worked. Wow. And I knew then, okay, Michael Boone can make it out here. Yes, sir. And then what really solidified it was last weekend when I was home in Greenville. Yes, sir. And we did that whole entire set. Okay, now home done accepted me. Yeah, man. Now I can, because home sees me with the singing stars on Labor Day. Yes. You know, and I was nervous because, you know, I'm coming home. 
as Michael Boone in in his own entity. Yes. You know, and I'm I don't know if everybody's gonna receive me as much as they receive me with the singing star. Yes. But I just went out there and did what I need to do, you know. I had something to prove. Yeah. And I proved it. Yes. <laughs> so now we're here and now you're preparing to um gear up to do the Boonisms Volume One live recording. Yes. How do you feel about that? I feel great. Yes, sir. I feel great. Um, everything is starting to fall in place. Yes, sir. Um, matter of fact, a couple of those songs that me and you recorded <laughs> that never got released. That never got released. Y'all gonna hit y'all gonna hit them songs that night too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, they, I'm, they good songs too. Yeah, I'm doing this recording in memory of a few special people. Um, okay. It's going to be on August 25th, Friday night, August 25th. August 25th. Y'all mark uh, y'all calendars. If y'all in the area, where is it going to be? In Clinton, North Carolina. Clinton, North Carolina. At the Clinton Civic Center. And it's free. Yes. It is free to get in. Only thing you got to pay for is merchandise. Absolutely. Y'all come there with y'all with y'all wallets and cash apps for that merchandise. Yeah, and give an offering. Yes. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it's going to be um, Friday night at 7 o'clock, August 25th in Clinton, North Carolina at the Clinton Civic Center. Um, and it's free. It's August 25th. So the first person we're going to dedicate it to is August 25th. And that's my favorite lead singer of all time. That's his birthday. The late Willie Neal Johnson. So wow. I, 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 didn't, I didn't really figure it out. Until I forgot, like, I forgot that was his birthday. So we're, we're going to dedicate that to him. I got a special song that I'm going to do in wow. the keynote style, dedicated to him because that's my favorite lead that's singer beautiful, man. of all time. I dedicate to him. This project is dedicated to my grandmother. Wow. Um, project is dedicated to Tonette Edwards. Yes. To Diane Edwards, their yes. mother. Um, to George Dickens Jr. Yes. And to Mondre Bynum. Yes. Because Mondre was supposed to do a project on me because, uh, and then he died. Yes. After that. I'm like, it seemed like. <laughs> yes. Certain man. people I do and a it's project tragic. with. It's dying and it's yes. tragic. I'm like, what is Lord? Yeah, because it's what? scary. Am I, am I doing yes. something? Yes. That's scary, man. And it's like, to, like losing them was kind of like, this is weird. Yeah. It's weird. It's very weird. It's so weird. you you it's quieter now. Yes. Doing this project in memory of them is a beautiful thing, man. And um I'm looking forward to seeing where you go from here, especially yeah. on your own. Yeah. And yeah. um yeah, it's an exciting thing. I know, I know for you it's kind of like, oh snap, I'm ready, but what's gonna happen? Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's kind of iffy. It's kind of Got me. Well, I'm not gonna say it's iffy. It's kind of got me questioning, wondering, like, what's next? Yeah. What's next? Yes, sir. But so before we go, 